Bonjour, bienvenue. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel, Hasty Books. I'm Camilla, and today we are celebrating the province in Canada that I am from, which is Quebec. I'm doing this right now. It's a bit late. I want to publish this ahead of June, but here we are. I'm doing this in sort of response or as a kind of helpful video uh, for a challenge that was set by the lovely Jolene at Bookworm Adventure Girl to read across Canada in 2023. So I think that's an amazing challenge. I haven't, I've been really busy this year, as you may notice from my general absence from the from YouTube and the booktube community, but I, you know, I've been looking at it. It's something I want to do more of, and I will hopefully be going to Canada soon and, you know, dive into it a bit more. But in June, Jolene picked the province of Quebec as the kind of theme for the month. So I thought, what better time to highlight, you know, some great suggestions from my home province. And I'm very thankful to Jolene for this. Her suggestion for reading from Quebec was to read uh, an author who is French Canadian. And I'm really glad about that because I often see <laughs> people uh, referring to a certain author, Louise Penny, as the author that they've picked to read from Quebec, which is fair. Obviously she's based in Quebec. And she writes, you know, about a Quebec specific um, investigation. And I know my parents have loved uh, the series and I want to dive in soon. I've actually just started watching the TV show. So again, kind of all very exciting and feel free to read it, obviously. But I thought if you want to expand your horizons a little bit, I would give you some suggestions of authors who write primarily in French or in the um, First Nations language. Uh, from, you know, different uh, places in the province that is not Quebec. So as I've just said, I think it's really important because while French is a majority language in Quebec, it's a minority language in Canada. So it's really cool to be highlighting that today. And similarly with First Nation Indigenous authors, I think from all over Canada, I think it's really, really important to read their voices. So that's how I'm going to go with this list. All of these titles have been translated into English. That's why I'm making this list so you can find them. And I'm going to start with seven authors that are French Canadian. And then I'm going to go into seven authors that are kind of First Nations, Indigenous authors based in different regions of what is now Quebec. Some of them have written, you know, in their native language and it's been translated sometimes into French, then in English or straight into English. And some of them have written French and then obviously with the English translation. I have two books maybe that were di directly written in English, but they are from First Nation authors who are based in Quebec now. The first book on my list is Man by Kim Tsui. And this is just, I mean, you could try any of her books. I know this one has been translated into English. It discusses um, the main character uh, in her move from Vietnam to Quebec and it's the relationship with the main character as a child growing up with her mother and Kim Thuy is a Vietnamese born and she moved to Quebec a long time ago. We get you know a bit of both cultures which I think is so beautiful and obviously Quebec is very multicultural so is you know all of Canada and I think that's something to embrace and I think Kim Thuy is an excellent choice to start with if you're looking for a uh, French-speaking authors based in Quebec. Next is an author that I personally am not a super fan of, but it's an author that we read a lot in school and I know it's um, maybe a slightly older generation really really enjoy and embrace because he the author is a bit older obviously. So it is Michel Tremblay and there was two things that I want to um, recommend. So the first one is the Chronicles of the Plateau which is an area of Montreal and he has multiple books in that series you know the chronicles the most famous one is the fat woman next door is pregnant and that's I think one I read in school I don't know if I loved it but you know if you want to read something typical and something that you know we read growing up <laughs> that's one to try. I think Albertin in Five Times is also one that is really impressive. I have not read that one, but I kind of really want to because I think maybe I should give another chance now that I'm a bit older <laughs> to Michel Tremblay. Next, we have The American Fiancé by Eric Dupont. He is actually from the region that my mother is from, so it's a region I know very well. And this is a bit of like a saga, a family saga that is based at the turn of the 20th century. 
and it it really just shows like the life across you know rural Quebec and then it becomes something much much bigger and there's a romance in there and I think that if you're looking for a beast to read and something to really immerse yourself in the culture of Quebec and its history I think this one will be a good one this is a book that I've started and not finished I need to get back to it it's not that I DNF'd it is that sometimes the big books you know they get a bit intimidating but I think it's one that I've been recommended I believe my friends given me this and yeah I've been recommended this by many many people so I think it's one that I'm definitely going to enjoy and that you may enjoy looking into as well next we have Aurora Montrealis this is obviously a play on Aurora Borealis this is by Monique Pou it is a series of short stories about Montreal and about you know living there and the different neighborhoods and just like really the the life of the city um it's a city that i'm from it's a city that i absolutely love and highly recommend visiting if you know you want to um this is a book i've been recommended and given by a friend um again i don't know if it's a sign that people just keep giving me these books but i think it's something so beautiful to read things that you know based where you're from or where you live and this is a really really touching short story collection and um, I think it's going to be a really good one for those who are maybe interested in learning about Montreal or kind of just about the culture a little bit. It is a bit older obviously so it's not like modern modern. Um, I think it's based it's from the 90s. Next we have Mad Shadows by Marie-Claire Blais. This is a bit of a psychological portrait or look into a family. So I think there's like a mother, I think it's a single mother and then the two children. And it is a, again, a little bit like Michel Tremblay, like a really classic book of Quebec. This was written, I believe in the 50s or 60s. So it's kind of a bit older and it gives you a bit of more of a backstory. Um, and also it just gives you an eye or portrait into family life. So if you something that, you know, potentially not like pinpointed somewhere specific in Quebec that you want to try, this may be a good one. Next we have Fanny Britt. So she's a playwright that has written these two novels. First is Hunting Houses and then we have Sugaring Season. Those are the translation, obviously. So I have them in French. So I've read the first one and I still need to read the second one. These books, I think, are a great way to dive into very contemporary writing from Quebec. And this first one actually really surprised me and how really good and succinct the story was. It's a woman who, you know, she has children, she's a real estate agent, and she gets kind of a call from an old flame, you know, an ex-lover. And she, I think she wants to imagine her life as very different. And then we get her whole, um, I guess her doubt and her thoughts through that process, but little flashbacks also into her growing up. So I, Thought it was really, really brilliant. Actually, I read it in 2021, I think. Sugaring Season has a very similar theme, I want to say. It's about people who are kind of settled and just not really doing anything more or happier about their life. And it's about privilege. And I just loved it. The title. <laughs> um, and this one has won, I believe, the Governor General Award um, a couple of years ago. And finally, my last recommendation is Danny Laferriere. He's an author uh, from Haiti that now lives in Quebec. And the book I want to recommend is The Enigma of the Return. And we follow a man in, in Haiti who is packing his bag quickly to move to Quebec. He's an author that I have not yet read, but I will definitely remedy that very soon because my parents have read so many of his books, so many of his um uh, articles because he writes uh, online as well and yeah he's an excellent author excellent kind of observational uh, author and yeah a great great perspective so I think it is really one to look out for. Next let's dive into the seven authors from First Nation Indigenous background that I would like to recommend. The first one is a book I've just read is Sanak by Mityadruk Napaluk. Um, she's an author. I think she died quite recently, like in the last kind of five to ten years. Um, but she, I believe, was one of the first chronicler of life um, in the kind of uh, north of Quebec within the indigenous community. And this tale of Sanak was written in her indigenous language originally, and then was translated into French and then English. And it is 
it is not the most pleasant read because because of the way it was written in its original language i think it's difficult to translate because um and i loved at the end of the of the book there was a huge kind of section by the translator who also did basically her phd research on um this novel and you know translating um this uh, first nation work of art and work of you know fiction and she talks about how there's a lot of repetition a lot of kind of noise a lot of these things that are used in the original language that make for a slightly bizarre read in french and english but i still think that it's a real wonderful window into the cultural and kind of way of life of these people especially because it starts a long long time ago and we get an idea of like at the beginning of the relationship with uh, the kind of european colonizers um and the canadians you know at the at that time and it's very very um i don't know it just really opened my eyes because they're like little vignettes uh we get an overall story but really it's just little things like we went hunting or we were making this food or you know the the relationships in terms of she wants to remarry or she had a baby and it's just these different windows into how they live that is absolutely wonderful next is a tea in the tundra by josephine bacon um bacon is an author who writes in her inu language as well as french so she does a bit of both i saw an interview with her last year um she was in kind of talk with the national poet of scotland so it was an incredible conversation i'm really glad that i attended and it really made me curious. I've read some of her poetry, but I've not read A Tea in the Tundra, but it is the work to start with if you want to read her. And uh, if you want to read some poetry, I think it's a great place to start. Next, we have another collection of poetry by someone slightly younger. <laughs> um, so if you want something a bit more millennial, Natasha Canepi Fontaine is who you probably want to go with. And her collection, Blueberry and Apricot, has been translated and this can be found online. Um, it is excellent, actually. I really, really loved it. I've discussed it on the channel before, I believe, because I read it in the last two years. And it was so good. And I just love the anger and I just love the power um, of her messaging and of her imagery that she uses. So I thought it was a must read, um, especially if you're from Canada, really, because it has to do with how um, Native people were treated in Canada. And it's something to be uh, aware of. Next is Kukum by Michel Jean. I've just discussed this because it's on my list to read this month and I've just started it and it's really, really good. This is the story of a young woman who falls in love with an Inu man and decides um, to pursue that relationship and to kind of go and live with that community and they kind of embrace her. And, you know, despite the cultural differences, it's like this beautiful story and trying to break kind of boundaries. And yeah, I'm really excited to read more about it. But I think it's one of like the must read if you want to read something by an indigenous author from Quebec. If you'd like to read a range of different voices from the indigenous community, another book you could read is Amun, A Gathering of Indigenous Stories. So it's a collection by a bunch of different authors and it was edited by Michel Jean. And finally, we have the two English books. The first is Crow Winter by Karen McBride. This is a book that recounts the story of a young woman who returns home after graduating and she kind of is visited by this crow who uh, is telling her that he's going to save her. He's there for her. And she's also dealing with like the grief with having lost her father. Uh, it looks really interesting, actually. And I was really glad to have found it in my research for this um, video so one to look into for sure and finally we have nonfiction. it is the right to be cold by Sheila Watt Cloutier this is a kind of a cry for help this is a woman's journey into trying to save um, her culture her community the arctic and the planet I think that's kind of part of the subtitle of this book and you know I think it deals really well at the moment you know climate change is so so very real and obviously at the moment it's currently impacting Quebec with these massive wildfires that are now impacting the rest of Canada and also heading down to the US uh, if you've seen some of the images it's one I'm going to be looking at really soon because I think it's just so so important to be listening to these voices as well uh, people who have been living there far longer than we have um, and who clearly want to save that land way more than we have been trying to let's be honest so i think a really really important read and that was it for me um this was my list of recommendations let me know if you have more what are you reading this june for the challenge let me know i'm very excited to see you know what everyone 
uh, has decided to read and you know what potentially they've discovered that I maybe don't know about and I'm always in for recommendation actually every time I go home as you may have noticed from all the books that have been thankfully donated to me <laughs> that I'm always looking for suggestions of books that are based in Quebec or from uh, authors who are based there so yeah very exciting as always thank you so much for watching and hey see you back bye